And can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Blanco? Here. Commissioner Lopez? Here. Commissioner Dickerson? Here. Commissioner Mohajer is absent. Chair Seifert? Here. Thank you. And uh, has everyone had a chance to uh, review the Planning Commission meetings, minutes from last meeting? And do we have a motion? Yeah, I move that we approve the uh, meeting minutes from the November 15, 2023 uh, meeting. And do we hear a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion passes. Chair, I will be abstaining since I wasn't there at the meeting. We have one abstention. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Commissioner. Uh, at this time, we're going to move to uh, item number four, uh, the public comment period. Uh, Kathleen. If you're participating via Zoom and wish to make a public comment, please use the raise hand button in the Zoom meeting portal. If you're using the phone, press star nine on your telephone keypad, then press star six to unmute your phone. When it is your time to speak, you will be requested to unmute your microphone and speak for the time allotted by the chair. Your, mi your microphone will be muted upon completion of your comments. Unless otherwise directed by the chair, speakers will have three minutes to comment. And I'm going to add that each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business that is not on the agenda. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed by chair. Okay, I have a speaker slip, but that's for item 5C. Uh, I don't see any speaker slips here. Do you have anyone on Zoom? Okay, we're going to move on from public comment. At this time, we're going to move on to item number 5A, Home Motors Chevrolet Cadillac Special Temporary Activity Permit at 1601 South Bradley Road. Can we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Chair Seifert, members of the commission, members of the public. Um, I'm Carol Zuzenhenny, senior planner, presenting the project before you this evening. Um, this is a project for Home Motors. Uh, who is requesting a special ac temporary activity permit to improve the front portion of their future de dealership site, which is located at the corner of Battles and Bradley Road, and to operate a temporary automobile sales yard while the new dealership building is being constructed. Commercial sales uses are typically not permitted to commence until all site improvements have been completed. However, off-site auto sales are listed among the activities allowed upon issuance of a special temporary activity permit as is a tract home or a lot sales office temporary use. Due to the visibility of the site, the community development director has referred approval of the special temporary activity permit to the planning commission, which is why we're before you this evening. So the pu public subject property for the home motors, the future home motors dealership is located on Battles Road between um, Bradley and Shepherd Drive, in area four of the Enos Ranch specific plan which was adopted by the City Council in 2016. Area 4 is intended for new automobile dealerships. And um, the project before you this evening is only a portion of the Home Motors site, which is outlined um, by my cursor here. It's a little bit smaller than this yellow square, this yellow rectangle. The entire Home Motors site takes up this top portion of the Area 4 auto sales um, district of the specific plan. The project site is within a plan development freeway tower auto sales overlay in the general commercial district. The plan development permit for home motors was approved along with the overall auto center master plan in 2018. Uh, those respective permits are for the North Campus, which was PD 2018-0006. And for the South Campus, it's PD 2018-7. And then the homeowners Chevrolet and Cadillac dealership was PD 2018-0004. And all of those have been approved by your commission. The homeowners property includes two lots. Shown on the screen, highlighted in yellow, is the lot under review uh, this evening. Um, all of the improvements for this proposal would take place in the parcel outlined in yellow which is on the eastern side. All the improve improvements would be on Bradley Road. 
um, surrounding the site is Toyota of Santa Maria directly to the south and then four, uh, four other auto dealerships to the north. Both are in a auto overlay. To the west is Azure Apartments in a high density residential zone. And then to the east is Highway 101 and Santa Barbara County unincorporated land, which is agricultural use. So this is a view looking south on Bradley Road um, towards Battles. The project site is surrounded by this chain link fence. It is currently vacant, but has been mass graded and hydro seeded um, to prevent dust uh, from um, spreading with, with the Santa Maria winds. And then on the bottoms, looking, looking west is looking onto the site from Bradley Road again. In the background is visible the Toyota dealership. And then further along the north, on this north um, top picture is the apartments in the background. And then the Ford dealership on this bottom here. So the applicant is requesting a special activity permit to construct paved inventory parking areas, as well as partial site improvements on the eastern portion of the future homeowner's site on lot two. Um, the entire homeowner dealership is um, composed of lot two and lot three of the um, Enos tract map 6,000, number 6,000. The proposal includes asphalt paving for access and circulation, construction fencing to protect the sales area from the building construction site, landscaping and stormwater control improvements within and around the perimeter of the vehicle sales area. In effect, the first approximately 71,200 square feet of dealership inventory area along the freeway Bradley Road frontage would be improved, and that's outlined in this red rectangle. This allows the landscaping to mature while the remainder of the site, including the buildings, is built out. So this is a rotated image showing the, um, the landscape plan and improvement plan. Um, so north is uh, going to be on the right hand of the screen with Battles Road, and then Bradley Road is on the bottom. Depicted on the screen is um, in red with the, the line and the squares is the construction fencing location. And then a, a temporary sales trailer as well as ADA parking is proposed as well. So once uh, this request is to um, uh, allow for um, sales of, of the homeowner's inventory while building permits are um, under review by the city, they are currently under review for both um, fine grading and for the building itself. Once the building permits are issued, the estimated um, time once construction commences is approximately 12 months. The building permits for fine grading and the building itself are being reviewed by staff. Um, the fine grading is actually in second review, so it's nearing completion um, and possible approval. So the project has been conditioned to require upkeep of the site and a time limit has been imposed on the temporary use. The applicant has requested a modification to the time limit of the permit, requesting an increase from 12 months to 24 months. And the reasoning is uh, the building permits are still under review with city staff and will take a few more months, months before they are ready to be issued. So um, there's a request to modify condition number two to increase the duration from 12 months to 24 months. And that concludes my presentation. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission take the following action. By motion, approve special temporary activity permit TU 2023-0073 as modified by staff's presentation tonight. Uh, staff and the applicant are available if there's any questions. Uh, thank you very, very much, Carol. Uh, do any of the commissioners have any ex parte on this item? Seeing none, uh, I do not either. Uh, do we have any questions for staff? We do not. Uh, do we have an applicant presentation? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Well, we're not going to have any rebuttal then. Okay, at this time, I'm going to uh, open the meeting up to the public. I do not have seen any written public, uh, any uh, written uh, 
communications. Do we have any uh, Zoom? We do not have anyone on Zoom. Questions? <coughs> Commissioner Dickerson. Sure. Um, I guess I, I do have a question moving from 12 to 24 months. Uh, but, I mean, um, do you think the, do they need an extra 12 months for your process for what's going on on your end of things? Or do you think that, um, that they should have, I mean, does it take 12 months to go through what you're on your end of things? <clears throat> Commissioner Dickerson, I, it w I don't believe it would take a full 12 months. Um, the condition is um, written as such that if the building is created with a, uh, or receives occupancy before the 24 months, the, the temporary use would end effectively. Um, however, no, to answer your question, I don't believe that the plan check process will take an additional 12 months. Okay. That was my question. Uh, do we have any additional questions? Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Blanco. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, so I, I, just to be clear, I guess, to be sure, the, the area that they're going to build out, the paving in that area, is that essentially the ultimate condition that, that's going to be there when the complete project is built out? Commissioner Blanco, yes. This yeah. will be the full um, improvement with curb gutter, um, ADA access, planter areas, land, uh, irrigation for the landscaping, and stormwater improvements. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm going to, I, I don't know if I ever closed the public comment, but I'm going to close it now. Uh, and then we're going to discuss or make a motion on this item. Uh, commissioners, anyone? Commissioner Dickerson. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I think this is fine. I mean, if it's ultimately gonna, this is what it's gonna look like anyway, and they need that to move inventory around while they're, um, while they're constructing. I, I don't have a problem with that, so I'd be supportive of it. Um, I think going from 12 to 24 months, you know, if it was a temporary thing, um, I, I might have a little bit more um, skepticism over it. But ultimately, as uh, Commissioner um, um, Blanco indicated it's it is going to be their their final deal, so I'm fine with that. Thank you, uh, commissioners. Commissioner uh, I, I agree with you, uh, Commissioner Dickerson. Uh, I don't have any issue with this. As a matter of fact, I think it's uh, pretty exciting that we're finally getting started on this, and I love to see cars on that uh, street. That's what we land on that street and it's an empty lot and so the sooner we get that thing filled up and more traffic and more people seeing the different uh, uh, varieties of uh, vehicles that we have for sale here I think that's going to be better uh, so I, I can totally see uh, uh, supporting this project uh, can I uh, would someone like to make a motion PU 2023-0073 and do we have a second? I'll second the motion. And can we have a roll call, please? Sorry, Chair. Uh, just to confirm, the, the motion is to also include the amended condition to number two that Carol mentioned. My apologies, yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Chair Seifert? Aye. Get the wheels rolling. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time we're going to uh, look at uh, item number 5B, United Rentals Electric Fence Conditional Use Permit at 1105 South Blosser Road. Staff, can we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Chair Seifert, and good evening, Commissioners. My name is Greg Vine, Associate Planner with the City, and tonight I am presenting a conditional use permit for 
Uh, it's U2023-0017 for Amarok LLC on behalf of United Rentals to install an 8 to 10 foot uh, tall 12 foot 12 volt battery powered security alarm system uh, electric fence at 1105 South Blosser Road. The request for the for this approval is due to the need of to secure the property from frequent break-ins that involve criminal breaches into the property and uh, numerous instances of perimeter fencing that has been cut. As with a similar electric fence use permit project on West Stoll Road, which was presented to the commission uh, early last year, this project has been elevated from the typical process of zoning administrative review due to the visibility of the site and being located uh, along one of the city's main arterial roads. Electric fences are permitted by right uh, within a within an applicable zone to a height of six feet by title 9-660 of the city's municipal code However, fences exceeding that height require a conditional use permit So the project site is northwest of the intersection of South Blosser Road and West Stoll Road and consists of two adjoining lots for a combined 2.16 acres the site is zoned PDCM, Planned Development Commercial Manufacturing. To the west and south are M2 heavy manufacturing uses, and PDCM uses are to the north. PDC2 uses, Planned Development General Commercial, and R3 high density residential uses are to the west. Generally, the existing uses surrounding the project site consist of wholesaling and proce uh, processing automotive shops, a convenience store, and apartments. The existing site on the uh, corner of South Blosser Road and Fur Furukawa Way is developed with a 11,200 square foot uh, industrial building and parking areas on the northern property. And outside storage and out outside display areas are on the southern property. This development was approved with the planned development permit in the early 90s. However, uh, United Rentals only moved to the site uh, this year. Uh, United Rentals is a provider of equipment and tool rentals to industrial and construction sites. Here we have a, a view of the existing site looking northwest from the median and South Blosser Road. In the forefront, is the approved outdoor display area with the screened outdoor uh, storage area in the rear. Along the Blosser frontage and a portion of Furukawa way, uh, way is a, an existing six foot tall wrought iron fence that encloses the outdoor display area while a six foot uh, chain link fence with slats surrounds the storage area. <coughs> This is from the rear or west of the site looking northeast from Furukawa Way and shows the existing chain link fencing with privacy slats. This portion of the existing fencing is topped with barbed wire, uh, which is required to be removed as a condition as, of this permit. Uh, moving on to the site plan, uh, the dash red line represents the electric fence location and the black lines just Offset to the outside of the red line represents the existing fencing that will remain. The proposed electric fence with monitored security alarm system will be placed approximately four to eight inches directly behind that existing perimeter fence. At the request of city staff, the applicant has agreed to lower the electric fence height from the initially proposed 10 feet to eight feet at the most visible portion of the site along Blosser Road uh, which is highlighted by this red section here. All other portions of the uh, proposed electric fence will be 10 feet in height. So I've provided here an example uh, of a site here in, in town that uh, where an electric fence has been installed. This is the Central Coast Truck Center that was brought to your commission early last year. As you can see, the system does blend in well with the background of the site. Uh, utilizes four inch steel posts as anchors or structural posts as shown on the right hand side of the photo and then thinner 
uh, one and a half inch fiberglass poles that you can see on the left hand side of the screen. And those uh, assist in keeping tension and uh, separation of the wires between the thicker posts. These are uh, elevations that represent the measures of safety that will be provided. The top left shows the wrought iron fencing that is located at the frontage of the property. Similar to that Central Coast Truck Center, uh, one inch by one inch steel mesh will be added to fill in the four inch gaps of the wrought iron fence, which the uh, image on the bot bottom right represents. That's actually taken from the site. The elevation on the bottom left represents uh, there's an existing seven foot tall block wall in the northwestern corner or rear of the subject property. And uh, the little yellow warning sign or the required bilingual signs that are to be placed every 30 feet as required by California Civil Code Section 835. So I'd like to reiterate that the proposed fencing will be installed entirely inside the existing perimeter fencing. Therefore, between the warning sign, steel mesh, and the existing slatted chain link fencing, a person would have to be intentionally trespassing to come into contact with the proposed electric fence. Additionally, the system will be equipped with the fire department Knox box to shut the system down in case of emergency for first responders. If the fence was to be cut or tampered with, the monitored alarm system would be triggered where an offsite dispatcher would determine the severity of the alarm and whether to contact the local PD for assistance. Uh, this concludes staff's presentation. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission, by motion, approve conditional use permit U2023-0017. Staff is available for any questions regarding this submittal, and I believe uh, the applicant is also available on sh uh, Zoom if you have questions for them. Uh, thank you, Greg. Do we have any ex parte on this item? Uh, seeing none, <clears throat> we're going to move on. I don't have any either. Uh, do we have any questions for staff? Commissioner Dickerson. Um, I, I, I may have missed it a few things. What is the uh, distance between the, uh, the current fencing, wrought iron or otherwise, and uh, where these are going to be placed, where the electrical is going to be placed? What's, what's the gap? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Dickerson. It's four to eight inches uh, behind the existing perimeter fencing is where the electrical fence is proposed. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is, are those fiberglass poles actually attached to, to the uh, wrought iron fence? No, those would be similarly uh, four to eight inches uh, behind the, the existing fencing. Commissioner. So they're not attached at all? To the existing fencing, no. Oh, okay. Seems pretty light, but okay. All right, thank you. Commissioner Blanco. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, so the, the four to eight inches, is that the same offset that we had for the Stoll project as well? Is that? Uh, Commissioner Blanco, yes, it is, oh. I believe it is. And is that, is, that, um, is that decided by the applicant, or is that kind of a code thing, or is that, is that what's the, the determination between, for that distance, I guess? I do not believe it's a code thing thing it's not in our code and um, I think that was more of a matter of securing the site so there wouldn't be you know anyone getting in between that distance and yeah. I was just curious about that offset if that was a code item or something or if that was just determined by the applicant or the you know the fence company okay yeah I believe the applicant would be better to answer that answer that one. yes sir okay um, what, uh, sorry, one more. Maybe the applicant can address that um, separately. Are we having separate applicant discussion? Okay. Yes, go ahead, Heather. I might be able to answer that. Um, our code um, doesn't have a distance requirement before between the outer fence and the inner electric. It just says surrounded that just says that the um, electric fence. Uh, must be completely surrounded by a non-electrical fence, but it doesn't give a distance requirement, and I don't believe there's one in state law either. Okay, great, thank you. And then, uh, sorry, one more question. Um, <clears throat> it appears, at least on the plans I saw on sheet three, is, is it gonna be solar powered, or is, um, 
I couldn't tell what was going on on sheet three of the plans. Is there a solar power? Is there a panel here that's going to feed that somehow, or is this separate? Or um... yeah, Commissioner Blanco, the um, it is battery powered, and the solar panel acts to recharge that battery. Okay, yeah. got it. Thank you. That's it. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so <clears throat> I just want to make sure I got this right. So we've got the six foot wrought iron fence that goes out front. And in that area along Glosser Road where we uh, where it's designated, we're going to go with an eight foot fence. Yeah, Commissioner Electric. Dickerson. Yes, that's correct. And then once we C get beyond me. the um, that's fine. And once we get beyond that uh, designated area, that's going to go up to 10 foot and then also on top of the block wall. Yes, but, sir. And we will be removing the existing barbed wire that's at an angle that's on there. Yes, sir. OK. Um, and the who decided we had to mo remove that barbed wire? Is that the, the applicant, or is that our ruling, or how does that work? The Chair Seifert, I, I know that the applicant recommends that to uh, the property owners, and that is also something that we at the city request because they have this new application of the electric fence, which essentially would provide more security than the barbed wire does. And uh, the barbed wire in of itself is not as appealing looking as a s system like this. And so we Has anyone had a chance to talk to the truck center and find out if their vandalism and theft has decreased with the uh, addition of the electric fence? Is it is effective? Uh, Chair, I'm not aware of any city staff that has reached out, but again, uh, I, I believe the applicant, Amarok, who, who's on Zoom, would be able to better answer that for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that's it for staff. Uh, Commissioner Dickerson. Um, Commissioner Lopez brought up the, um, the um, fiberglass uh, um, poles, um, and perhaps any of the commissioners might have a better idea of what's available as far as fiberglass poles go. I mean, because it seems to me if this thing is only four four inches away and we get some of our normal Santa Maria winds, I'm a little concerned that those poles may may bow a little bit into into the current um, wrought iron or whatever. Um, so I guess the question I have is, should there be something more uh, sturdy, or are fiberglass poles perfectly fine and they'll do the job? So. Um, I guess that's a, I don't know if that's a question. It's just kind of hanging out there. Um, Commissioner uh, Dickerson, thank you. Yeah, I, I've pulled up some uh, fence sections that the applicant had provided that uh, may illuminate that these fiberglass poles are in fact anchored in the ground. Uh, Actually, it's the next one. Because I'm, I'm a little concerned that the pole itself may bow, sure. you know, in the wind. Um, I know that the wires themselves also have, uh, I think they call them, uh, they're not tensioning rods, but they're some sort of tensioners that keep constant tension on the wires um, and in between the poles. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think uh, Amarok would be able to better answer that for you, the applicant. I, I did want to add just one thing to that comment too. Um, this does require a building permit, so um, you know our building division will be reviewing it to make sure it complies with at least all of the the building requirements to install the fence. We have had an, a few of these types of fences be permitted. We haven't had any issues yet with the winds, um, but again, as Greg mentioned, I think I would like to hear from the applicant because um, this is pr their pretty much their standard design. Uh, for these fences that we've been seeing and maybe they can provide a little more information just about the design of um, those <coughs> poles and and how that all has been working for them is there any other question uh, there is a note up here also that says the steel poles will be located approximately on each side of the gate and every 90 feet or greater uh, turn and fence line so it is a mix of steel and fiberglass uh, according to this note. Um, at this time, <coughs> uh, do we want to have the, uh, is the applicant on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Would they like to uh, 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 join the meeting? Yes. So he's allowed to speak. 
Mara, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, we use insulator brackets to maintain the separation between wrought iron, uh, EGD, and um, th that essentially guarantees that it's not going to be blowing into the fence. The um, separation is based on uh, the International Electrotechnical Commission um, uh, specs, so it's four to eight inches, and it follows state law. And staff did correctly point out that we have installed a few of these in Santa Maria with no issues uh, to date. And I, I'll just add also, obviously, as I said, you know, it will go through permitting. So we submit calculations along with that. And we have over 700 installations now in California. We've had no issues. There are other areas with a lot of wind as well. And uh, our fence has held up just fine. And how's the track record on the, uh, uh, are, the are these fences working versus like the uh, the old standard uh, barbed wire uh, that gets clipped and the people come in and steal everything blind? Are, are these fences working or uh, what's your experience? Absolutely. Yes? Absolutely. So our business owners obviously need these tools with a rising crime. Uh, we have yet to hear from any one of them that it's not working for them. They pay a, a fee to use this. Essentially, we own that uh, fence part of that technology, so they would not keep paying it if it wasn't working for them. It's a big deterrent. It keeps them safe. It allows them to not lose property and also helps the community. So it's uh, it's a big win for everyone, except the criminals. Question. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's it for us uh, as far as the questions. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Um, uh, we're, going, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, and I don't have any speaker slips. Do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to speak, Kathleen? There are no other hands raised. Okay, I'm going to be c uh, closing the public hearing at this time and bring the discussion back to the com uh, commission. Uh, is there any discussion or motion? I, I'll make a motion ahead. if there's uh, no discussion. I, I, let me oh, just go ahead. I would like to add one thing, <clears throat> just as a, a comment. Uh, I did talk to some uh, some uh, a rather large equipment dealer, and uh, not recently, but uh, within the last six months, and they uh, relayed a, a pretty scary story to me, where uh, in the, they had video of two o'clock in the morning, an actual semi mover pulled out on the street, pulled up next to their property. They got onto the property, they got into one of those huge farm equipment, I mean, one of the big ones, actually loaded it up on the semi and drove off. And we're not caught. So uh, these type of thefts and these type of uh, yards are magnets. And, uh, the, and the, the previous way that we've been protecting them uh, just don't seem to be working. So I'm happy to find that uh, this is a, a, a good, a good alternative and it certainly is a better looking alternative uh, when we see the pictures so uh, I had some concerns with the 10 foot along Glosser so staff thank you for taking care of that I think that would have looked uh, pretty bad eight foot uh, because they're just wires probably won't look that bad uh, it, we, it will be sticking up uh, against the six foot fence though but we really do have to have some sort of a way to uh, curb this uh, just blatant uh, vandalism and theft. So uh, I, I, I'm glad to see this. So at this time, uh, I would uh, accept a motion. Yeah, Chair, I'll make a motion to, um, uh, by motion to approve conditional use permit U 2023-0017. And do I hear a second? I'll second that. And can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Chair Seifert? Aye. Um, the uh, motion passes and uh, the item passes. Uh, thank you very much. At this time, we're going to move on to uh, item number 5C the Santa Maria Airport Business Park Specific Plan Amendment 
and plan development permit at the northwest corner of Highway 135 and Union Valley Parkway. Uh, staff, can we have a presentation, please? Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. Uh, this is both a specific plan amendment and an application for a plan development permit. Uh, this, both uh, items are occurring on airport district property. Uh, this is the uh, airport specific plan is outlined in yellow and the project site is indicated by the red uh, polygon. So we have a specific plan amendment which involves two components. One is to add an additional land use category uh, to the permitted list of uses for the PDM1-PF slash A zone, which is the light industrial public facility zone of the airport specific plan. And the second specific plan amendment component is to revise the Fox and Wood Street section uh, to better accommodate the existing land use categories. The additional item is a plan development permit for a uh, self-storage facility. The Planning Commission did see this application uh, for the amendment and the plan development permit at their October 6th Planning Commission meeting. Uh, during that presentation staff had uh, included one other item under the specific plan amendment and that was regarding metal siding on the exterior of buildings but after discussion at the study session it was determined that that was not needed as a component of the amendment so here we see uh, a more detailed aerial of the site and a more precise location shown in, out, in outline of yellow, uh, what property or what portion of the site this amendment will apply to. And as you can see, it includes uh, Fox and Wood alignment, as well as a parcel on the east side of Fox and Wood. Here's another view of that site location showing the existing airport specific plan zoning. And I would like to mention that the zoning we're speaking of tonight only occurs on the airport specific plan uh, area and only on this site shown here with the green and gray diamonds. So the first component of the specific plan amendment is to add heavy retail business as a permitted use in the M1PF light manufacturing public facilities airport zone. Uh, the definition is written out here. I won't read it to, uh, to the commission or the audience, uh, but essentially we're looking at a retail business similar to a home improvement warehouse or nursery style business that is catering towards the general public and not towards contractors or the trades. Uh, it could involve the sale of bulk goods such as lumber, carpeting, building supplies, uh, garden materials, and other similarly themed items. Uh, it might also include some ancillary uses such as tool rental, uh, some small tool or tractor rentals. And again, we're talking at a consumer level, uh, not um, serving the agricultural community, that sort of thing. So this definition has been incorporated into the, what we would call a text amendment to the specific plan. Uh, that has been provided as an attachment to the staff report. Uh, the entire zoning section is included to, to uh, show the commission how that uh, amendment fits into context of the entire section of that specific plan zone. 
So the second amendment item is the Fox and Wood Street section. Um, the street section is being modified and narrowed um, and it is being modified to help support what will be future commercial uses on the uh, west side of, excuse me, the east side of Fox and Wood Road. Uh, you can see the red and green diamond area. That is a zoning in the airport specific plan that allows more uh, of your typical retail commercial zoning and, uh, and uses. Um, so what's shown on the slide, what's depicted is the current right-of-way section in the specific plan. And here we have the proposed section. Um, as you can see, this will include multimodal aspects, including a multi-use path to, as well as an on-road bikeway in both directions of the road. And the other most notable change is that what had been a center median is now going to be a center uh, left turn lane. And again, this will help provide access to those more commercial uses of the, uh, on the Eastern parcel. I all would also like to, to point out while this is up on the screen that um, the property lines are indicated in the red dashed lines. And so the, um, 30 foot setback to building, which is a part of the specific plan for this zone is depicted here as well. The first 10 feet will be a PUE and tree planting easement. Uh, the next 10 feet will be a 20 foot setback to parking. And then finally the, the, the uh, 10 feet additional to the uh, building setback. So that was the specific plan amendment with the two components. We're now moving on to the plan development permit. And this plan development permit is for a uh, self-storage facility. Um, there'll be 12 individual buildings with 704 storage units proposed, uh, most of which are being uh, uh, incised uh, 100 to 200 square feet in size. Uh, with some up to 360 square feet in size. Unlike many of the more recent uh, self-storage facilities that the commission has reviewed, uh, this one will not have a caretaker's unit. And the applicant has described how uh, technology, cameras, lighting, and remote monitoring will take the place of an in-person overnight caretaker. As you can see here, this site will leave some vacant area uh, between itself or it, the development and Foxwood Road. And that area is approximately 3.4 acres. And the uh, land use amendment that we just mentioned with the additional use being added essentially will only apply to that area uh, once this permit uh, moves through the process for the self storage facility. The applicant is requesting a reduction in the number of parking spaces. Uh, the standard is one space per every 10 storage units. And based on Institute of Traffic Engineer data, uh, the applicant is requesting that uh, the uh, required spaces be reduced to one for every 15 units. And that will equate uh, to 47 spaces being provided on the, on the site. Those 47 spaces are all internal and they're intended to serve the storage units themselves. In addition to those spaces, there's going to be an additional five spaces in the uh, front area for prospective customers or customers that are just dealing with the main office, which is located at the Fox and Wood entry. So <clears throat> shown on the perimeters of this graphic, um, on the right-hand side of the graphic is, is the future basin area, um, open space and basin area. Um, there's also the extensive landscaping along Union Valley Parkway and the landscaping that will be provided along Fox and Wood Lane. Um, these are all uh, components 
of the specific plan and are required through the specific plan. I will also mention that the site is providing a minimum 15% landscape and they're providing it on the perimeters of the site, not internal, which is preferred by staff because that gives the most uh, public benefit uh, for the landscaping and also places the other buildings behind a landscape screening, which is also a benefit. Moving on to the architecture of the building, uh, the buildings will be um, standing seam metal style um, siding uh, with architectural step backs, building height changes, uh, awning eyebrows, uh, and um, storefront glazing uh, for the windows on both first and second floor. I will note that the glazing on the second floor provides views to what appears to be storage units, but those are essentially stage sets um, and they're just used to help provide some interest for the buildings and also um, help communicate the use of the building to the outside public. You can see the colors ivory and autumn red and also a bright white color. The bright white color was discussed at the study session um, and the applicant would like a request to uh, continue to propose that color for portions of the building to provide some contrast and also to highlight the main office. The main office is shown on the right hand side and will be on the lower floor and um, provide not only leasing of the storage spaces, but also provide the uh, moving, the standard moving supplies, um, boxes, tape, and so forth. So some other views of other portions of the facility. On the uh, upper view is the south end of Fox and Wood. So this will be closer to Union Valley Parkway. Again, you, you see a taller portion of the building with the uh, stage set behind the windows. Uh, those will not be occupied units. Um, those are just decorative. decorative. Um, and you can also see on that upper elevation that the buildings themselves will help to form the perimeter of the yard area or the internal workings of the facility. And they'll be uh, supplemented where there's openings with wrought iron fencing. Again, on the lower portion, and this is the elevations that are facing Union Valley Parkway, you can see the step backs, the building height changes, and the color changes used to help uh, break up the massing of the building. This uh, facility has been reviewed under uh, CEQA for CEQA compliance. Uh, the conclusion, um, well, I'll back up. The uh, initial specific plan was reviewed under an EIR. Uh, that EIR was uh, again reviewed and a supplemental environmental impact report was done in, in 2021 when we did the amendment for this property and the property on the east side of Foxenwood. Uh, changing the land use designations on those properties. And looking back at both those documents, they adequately cover the changes that are proposed here. Uh, the plan development permit is something that was permitted under the, the specific plan as it stands today. Uh, so that is not part of the environmental review. It would only be looking at the specific plan amendment and uh, that specific plan, plan amendment is not a significant change and therefore the prior CEQA reviews and CEQA documents ad adequately cover this project. And when I say the plan development permit is not part of this review, it's an allowed use under that zone and is already covered by those prior documents. So the recommendation to the Planning Commission is to take the following actions. By resolution, recommend that the City Council approve the specific plan amendment. And by motion, recommend that the City Council approve 
the plan development permit. Uh, the specific plan amendment does require council approval. Uh, the plan development permit should travel with that specific plan amendment uh, for council approval as well. That concludes staff's presentation. The applicant is in the audience and is ready to answer any of the commission's questions, as am I. Uh, thank you very much, Frank. Uh, do we have any ex parte on this particular item? Saying none, I, I have none either. Uh, do we have questions? I have one. Go ahead, Commissioner Lopez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question, um, Frank. I, I, don't, I don't recall if I brought it up at the study session, but was there any concern with conflict exiting the, the, uh, the self-storage just because there's two, three garage doors right, right there where the, the cars would queue to leave? Uh, Chair Seifert, Commissioner Lopez, I don't know if that was reviewed in depth. That can be, uh, that likely be reviewed, reviewed in more depth during the building plan reviews, but um, I don't think that's likely going to be an issue. I can defer to the applicant if they've, uh, if you're already talking about like the gates and the doors are right adjacent to it. Right. Uh, yeah. I think I'd like to defer to the applicant on that one. Good evening, uh, Chair Seaford and members of the Commission. I'm Eric Justison with RRM Design Group representing the, uh, the project. Um, to answer your question, uh, Commissioner Lopez, no. We don't anticipate um, any issues in the entrance area. Uh, parking can be um, a pretty wide uh, aisleway. It's about 38 and a half feet there um, in the aisleway, which will give plenty of space for a car to park, load up a unit, and then have you know, uh, access on either side of that, going in and out of that area. Um, pretty common configuration for an entrance into a sort of a flag lot consideration like this. So, so that, that gate slides, or it's a, it's a, it slides, uh, I guess, to the south. If you look at sheet A6, right? <clears throat> There's two different portions of the gate. The exit gate is a rolling gate that's, that rolls back along the, um, the side of the frontage of the project and the entrance gate, I believe, is a hinge gate that uh, swings inward upon access. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you guys are okay with that, I, I, I thought that might be a conflict, so. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Am I on? Mark? Uh, Chair Seifert, yes. So there are two bus turnouts that are proposed, one on Union Valley Parkway, one on Foster Road. Who's building them? The applicant would be. Both of them? Correct. And are they both the max, uh, 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 what do we call them, the, the, the kiosk, whatever, with all the, the lighting and the... the Correct. The it'd be a turnout with a um, shelter. Uh, you may, so the transit... Division has started rolling out shelters. Uh, the new ones you might see by um, Krispy Kreme. Uh, that's if you're curious what they look like. Um, but that's what the new shelters. Oh, I never like. go by Krispy Kreme. I don't. Know. Where is that exactly? <laughs> <laughs> On uh, Bradley Road near. I'll take. I'll take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that's that's our latest and greatest uh, kiosk. Or what are we calling it? Cheers, you. Yeah, that's that would be. Uh, that's just our new standard uh, bus shelter and turnout. Um, we have. In a future study, the uh, transit division is looking at a BRT, which would be a elevated platform, much more amenities. That's you know, we're talking 15-minute headways. That's so it wouldn't be the latest and greatest. The Cadillac, um, that's that's going to be reserved for uh, this. We're studying Broadway, but um, to answer your question in more depth. But but this one has the scrolling. Up Correct. Of the, of the of the where the bus is going, all the different Absolutely. schedules, all that type of stuff. Correct. And they, that's uh, located at both of the bus stops? Correct. Okay. And everyone's agreed to that? Yes. Like uh, I believe the applicant is asking for a development agreement that's not before the commission at this time. Um, the, that, would have, that would go to the city council for approval. Um, the details of that, what is going to be deferred and what is going to be constructed has not been determined at this time. And but at the ultimate 
build out, yes, it would. Okay. And a, the time, the time to defer and the conditions of that deferral have yet to be determined. But as as written, they would construct everything uh, with this development. Okay. And the new street section, uh, I, I remember I, I got voted down on this one, but uh, the, the, bi the bike lane's in the street, correct? We have a six foot bike lane on either side? That's correct. And that, uh, didn't you mention that, that there was going to be some connectivity uh, to the, uh, the, the actually protected bike path? Yes, so uh, Chair Seifert, the two multi-purpose, two eight foot uh, sidewalks, they're not really, you're allowed to ride a bike on those. Uh, so those are separated and on the Fox and Wood street section itself. In addition, the specific plan calls for a multi-purpose one, which is a 10 foot uh, section. It's currently depicted on the west side of this project, um, the back of the building. Um, we're in discussions with relocating that with the applicant. Uh, that's located in the conditions of approval as well. So um, an acceptable location, we're debating on where it's gonna go. Uh, staff would like it to be on uh, Orchid Expressway. Uh, if you basically follow the existing trail south, you know how it has that jog to meet up with Fox and Wood Lane? Yes. Uh, the preferred location for staff would be to extend it uh, at that intersection, at that signalized intersection with uh, Foster Road and, Ox and um, Orchid Expressway. I would that have way, to agree that that would be the, the natural That place. way, um, obviously, if you're riding, you have a continuous mm -hmm. path, you have a signalized location across on, Fox, on Foster Road, uh, that'd be the preferred location. And I know that Foster, uh, the, uh, the traffic has died down somewhat uh, from the past because of the new Union Valley Parkway. It's not so new. Um, but what are we doing to uh, make sure that the getting across that street is safe for bicycles and pedestrians? So there are no proposed uh, improvements with this development. Um, with the development on the east side, um, there will likely be a roundabout or inter uh, signalized intersection at the uh, intersection of um, Fox and Wood and Foster. It's currently depicted as a roundabout in the specific plan. Um, that's that's likely what we would be requesting, just because it does reduce speeds, it does allow um, fewer conflict points for vehicles. I'm actually a fan. I, 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 I've learned to like roundabouts. Uh, they need to be a little larger uh, w w width wise. Uh, people have a, lar a hard time figuring them out. Uh, right now, the ones that we have, right. um, <clears throat> I was stuck behind someone today trying to make a right turn when they think it's a stop sign. It's not a stop sign. Right. So it, a little bit of education maybe, but uh, <clears throat> they, they're, they're way better than lights as far as what I can see. So uh, thank you for that. And then of course we'll have the crosswalks Absolutely. and the indication of the, where the bike gets off just like all the other roundabouts. Okay, and then what about on Fox and Wood uh, Union Valley? Uh, I know we have a bike path there. Does that stay pretty much, uh, we're not doing much to that? On uh, Union Valley? Yes. Uh, I believe there are frontage improvements required along their uh, frontage. Um, so curb gutter sidewalk uh, and the bus turnout. Um, but besides that, it's not, not extending further uh, west on Union Valley Parkway. And I know it's on here, and I'm sorry that I missed it, but we have two bus turnouts. Can someone, the little red button, show me where they are located? I, I know we have them located. I'm just, I missed it. Where, oh, where those? Uh, on Union Valley Parkway, uh, west of Fox and Wood. And then. So on, somewhere in there? Correct. And then okay. same uh, mirrored for Foster. About oh, there. it's on Foster? Yeah, both will be there. Okay. So they're far enough down so that, because uh, the, the traffic certainly picks up speed by then. So, yeah, so they're, they're going to be well off the, the beaten track. Okay. And these are the locations uh, approved and requested by transit. Perfect. Okay. Uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Blanco. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so along the same lines, Mark, you mentioned improvements, not really a lot at Fox and Wood, but they are doing Fox and Wood and uh, Union Valley Parkway. They are doing the intersection improvements, sidewalk, and it looks like curb ramps, right? So a crossing across Fox and Wood, but is there also a crossing that's going to be included across Union Valley? This, I see curb ramps that direction. Is there... Is there, uh, there going to be crosswalk there? 
uh, Commissioner Blanco, uh, no. that's not proposed at this time. Um, just because I, I, this, this speeds in width of that road. I mean, so it, it's, I wouldn't expect it. So I was just curious because you're showing, they're showing curb ramps. So I wasn't sure if that was the intent or. Technically, it's a legal crosswalk. It just would not be a marked crosswalk. So someone crossing there wouldn't get a jaywalking ticket, even though I don't think that's legal anymore for someone to um, be ticketed for jaywalking. But uh, to answer your question, there are no proposed improvements at this time uh, that may be signalized with the future development. Um, you, traffic didn't warn it I, I guess I would just um, comment that you know we should be careful about designating that curb ramp in those directions you know kind of um, I wouldn't say encouraging but definitely making it easy to, to provide access across Union Valley which I agree with you as a high-speed road I wouldn't expect uh, pedestrians to to want to get across there or encourage pedestrians to get across there but um, just looking at the intersection, it looks like it's, you know, it's something that, that this plan would, would, would be showing, right? So right. It, it may just be a design item to consider crossing across Union Valley. Of course, right. we probably don't want to encourage that. But, um, yeah, this is something to, to consider. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Blanco, I would not be uh, opposed to a directional curb ramp just across Fox and Wood, and uh, it would indicate that crossing Union Valley Parkway is not a marked or not an unmarked crosswalk okay great thanks thank you commissioner I, I did find one other item uh, that I wanted to ask about on the proposed text amendment on item number d4 um, an increase in pipeline capacity through the repair maintenance re replacement and installation of new pipelines what are we talking about there I'm sorry, can you clarify that? Or uh, it repeat? says an increase in pipeline capacity through repair, maintenance, replacement, or installation of new pipelines as defined in Section 12-2. Which pipelines are we talking about? I haven't heard of any increases. The, these are the language, other than the red uh, language identified, uh, excuse me, Chair, members of the Commission, um, this is the existing language of the specific plan. So. Everything in here other than the red added about the heavy retail business has been in the specific plan for many, many, many years. Um, simply because it's listed here doesn't mean that something is going to necessarily happen. And I believe this may be standard language out of uh, some of our light industrial zones out of our Title 12 is just to allow the expansion of pipelines. If, if, there, if we find that there's an undersized sewer or so, so not a capacity, then this gives us the ability to change that. Uh, most likely this would apply to privately owned. It, this would not apply to city infrastructure. So uh, Chair for commissioners, um, just gonna interject. I think it may be a reference to our municipal code that allows for reimbursement agreements. Um, that's it's very similar language that we allow for um, the first developer in to construct uh, improvements and then collect a fair share from uh, subsequent applications um, they would record an agreement and map or some combination of the two um, that way they're not the ones uh, carrying the full burden of the improvement I, I don't remember what the outcome was but we did have a, an issue at the Carpenters Union uh, because of the uh, properties and the ownerships and the tie-ins and the verbiage. Uh, I'm not sure how that ended up, but it, uh, I, I know we did have an issue with it, so thank you. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none. Um, we kind of had an applicant presentation. Would you like to come up and speak this time? Yeah, Chair uh, Seifert, members of the commission, and again, Eric Justison. Um, I don't have a presentation. I'd just like to say a couple of words. First, thanks to staff. Um, uh, we, you know, since the rezoning occurred um, uh, back in 2021, we've been working on sort of the first phase of the project, which is this initial storage project and the, f the improvements to Fox and Wood. Um, the airport district has had uh, this land and have been looking forward to creating some revenue off the lease of the property for many, many years since the specific plan was originally adopted back in the 90s. So it's kind of exciting to be here with sort of the initial um, 
you know, improvement of infrastructure along Fox and Wood, uh, the storage project, and then a second phase, which is the commercial center on the east side of uh, Fox and Wood between, between um, Orchid Express Ferry and, and Fox and Wood. So we're looking forward to come back with a separate application for that. But um, uh, the rezoning is important to open the uses up to a lot of interest we've heard um, in sort of garden supply, um, farm supply, tractor supply kinds of uses. Um, and so we're, we're really happy to see that moving ahead. Um, and um, I guess uh, I'd like to also thank the district for working with us over all these years. We've been, uh, they've been a great partner to us standing, standing by as we've like pushed forward the rezoning and, and this initial project. So with that, I'll just say thanks so much for the presentation. If there are any other questions, I'm here to answer them. Otherwise, we uh, support the recommendation of the staff report. Questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to open this up to the public. Uh, do we have anyone on Zoom? No, we don't. I know. We got that one. Yeah, I finally got one. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'm going to bring up uh, Nash Moreno. He is uh, from the Public Airport District, and uh, he wants to talk about this item. You have three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Commissioners. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nash Moreno. Uh, my address is 741 Royal Terrace, so pretty close to this proposed development. Um, nice, to see some, nice to see some familiar faces here, uh, but for those that I have not had the pleasure to meet yet, um, I am Nash Moreno, and I am the uh, current board president of the Santa Maria Public Airport District. Uh, since 1995, uh, I was three years old at that time, by the way, uh, we have had a plan to develop that region around the airport. Uh, that plan has changed over the years, but one thing that we have not seen is actual development. Um, so I see this G3 development and amendment uh, that we have proposed here as an important step forward for, the air for that area's development. And I look forward uh, to the hopeful approval of uh, this amendment and uh, development. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have no other speakers. Uh, at this time, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Do we have a discussion? A motion? Commissioners? Commissioner Dickerson? Well, I would just like to say, I mean, I, I, I support the, um, the project. I'm, uh, I'm um, like those who have spoken or uh, or Nash that spoke. Um, it's really nice to see this thing moving forward finally, and, and something occurring in that space. Um, it'll be, um, I think it'll be a, a good addition to it, and uh, I, I hope they do well with it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Blanco. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah. You know, hearing it at a study session, I think uh, you know we were able to vet out a lot of the the questions and concerns about the development itself, but then also the, the offsite issues and concerns, um, thinking through the, the, the street section even and other things. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we reduced that section. I think it was really too big of a street section anyway, so I'm glad to see that. Um, and then the, the, the offsite amenities, the, the transit stops uh, for that area, pretty important, uh, kind of being remote out of the outskirts of town. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, and, and also glad to see something happening over there. This has been sitting there uh, for a long time, I think, waiting for, for something to happen, and I, I'm glad to see that something's actually moving along. So, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm glad we uh, went through the process, uh, study session, and now here I think it makes it a lot easier for us to review. So, thank you. Commissioner, Commissioner Lopez, you have anything? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's a great use there. Uh, there's all the residents south of, of Union Valley Parkway. And I like how they, they took time and it's going to be tucked away or tucked behind what will ultimately be the, the heavy retail area. So I like that about it. I uh, was skeptical of the, the, the width of the street being reduced, but I, I think that um, uh, that was well thought out as well after, after we looked at it study session. So I, I can see myself supporting this project. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with the other commissioners, and I, I do uh, really enjoy the study session process. 
uh, it lets us uh, speak about these projects, work with you guys, and make sure that we vet what we need to do. Uh, and, and we talked about the, uh, uh, the frontage and the, uh, the necessary uh, of uh, getting the plants tall enough to get that wall hidden. And then uh, it was also brought up that we have the variations in the wall, so it's not just one straight long wall. It's got some good look to it. Um, I'm excited about the connectivity of our, uh, of our bicycles uh, uh, zones. The, I, I still don't like the idea of having uh, bike lanes in the street, but I'm, there's people that like that, uh, as I've been told. Uh, that's not my favorite thing, so I do like the idea that we have the, uh, the one in front of the airport that's completely separate, and now this is going to tie into that. I think that uh, that's, that's really good for our community uh, as far as connectivity and walking and, and riding bikes. Uh, that's, uh, we're trying to make that much more uh, usable, so I think that's good. Uh, they listen to us on as far as the colors and the design, and uh, I think this is going to be a great start for the uh, airport and for the community. So with that, uh, we need a resolution and a motion. Commissioner Dickerson. Want to do these separately? Yes. All right. um, I move that the Planning Commission take the following actions that by resolution we recommend that the City Council approve the specific plan amendment SPZ 2022 001. And do we hear a second? My mic on. Yeah, I'll second that motion. And can we have a roll call, please? <laughs> Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. <clears throat> Chair Seifert? Aye. Resolution passes and the motion. Right. And that the Planning Commission take the following actions. By motion, recommend that the City Council approve the plan development permit PD 2022-0017. And do we have a second? Sure, I'll second that motion, too. And can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Dickerson? Aye. Commissioner Blanco? Aye. Commissioner Lopez? Aye. Chair Seifert? Aye. The, the item passes. Congratulations and good luck with your project. Thank you very much. Okay, it's so quiet. I think we can just keep moving on. Uh, we're going to go on to other business right now. Uh, oral reports from Planning Commission and staff. I'm on? Yes. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. So I have a, a, an update regarding the City Council meeting that we had last night. Um, there were two planning projects that were presented. One was the general plan update uh, preferred land use alternative item that your commission had recommended um, approval to the city council. The city council reviewed it and they did make um, one change. So if you recall, we had um, presented three alternatives to you that was A, B, and C. Um, and we were recommending alternative C, which was the, um, the hybrid uh, alternative that included some infill changes as well as um, studying annexation of a, around 985 acres east of the 101. So the city council reviewed that and they ended up approving an alternative D <laughs> essentially, which is the, um, the hybrid uh, alternative that we presented and uh, they added an additional um, area to study for potential annexation that's south of the area that we had recommended. So it's an area that's really kind of south of the Prell Road or Betteravia Road area all the way down to Union Valley Parkway and it encompasses the Elks Rodeo Event Center area. Um, it added around a thousand acres um, to what we were going to be studying. So we now have their direction, and so we're going to continue to move forward with the general plan update um, project, which now includes 
starting this um, annexation study, also starting the environmental review process. So it's an environmental impact report that we'll be doing. And um, so we're moving into the fourth phase now. So that was uh, great to get that project moving forward again. Um, and then the other item last night was the housing element. And um, the housing element was also recommended for approval by your commission and they did, uh, the, the council did adopt it. So um, our next step on that is to send it back to the state for uh, a final certification. Um, we expect them to certify it. We didn't make any changes at all from their prior review and we had received that letter from them in October that it substantially, uh, it was in it, that it is in compliance with state law. So we expect it'll be certified within the next couple months. So um, that was city council and then, um, uh, do y'all have any questions about that at all, or? Yeah, yeah. Commissioner. Dana, yeah, uh, on the uh, land use alternative, um, was the direction to replace the acreage that was in alternative C with that alternative D area, or to augment the alternative C area with that area, other area? Yes, so the it's latter. A bigger, yeah, okay. there was discussion about potentially just taking what we had recommended and, and flipping it down okay. to only include that lower area. It's also been called the Bradley Lands area in the past. Um, and, but ultimately, no, it ended up just augmenting um, what we had originally recommended to study. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then um, for our future schedule, um, we had already decided to cancel the commission's hearing actually i should back up so we have a study session tomorrow at 1 30 at shepherd hall and that's where we're going to be going over the adu ordinance amendments um, that we had a, a, a hearing if, i think a month or so ago and then um, the meetings on the 20th and the 21st we had already decided to cancel just due to lack of items and the holidays um, we also do not have any items scheduled for the first week of January for that hearing and study session. So I was going to recommend that we cancel those meetings as well. And so that means that the next time we would be meeting for a hearing. What's the date on those? Um, so January 3rd and 4th would be canceled. And so the next time we'd be meeting for a hearing would be January 17th. And at that meeting, we would do um, the election of the PC officers, the, the officers as well. Um, we, we typically do that in January. And we have a couple of items that we are anticipating bringing that day. And then there'd be a study session as well on, the, on January 18th. And we have an item ready for that. So that was the update I have um, tonight. And I'm available for questions. Thank you. Oh, I, we have one other <coughs> oh, I have one other question for you all. Um, for, I just wanted to confirm that we do have a quorum for the study session tomorrow. Um, I understand Commissioner Mahajer will be <coughs> absent and Commissioner Blanco may be absent as well. So I just wanted to confirm that the remaining three of you will be able to attend. I'll be there. I'll be there. Great, thank you. Dana, thank you um, for that update and for all the hard work. I know um, the amount of work that goes into uh, the items that were seen last night is intense, and the discussion was uh, interesting, uh, and the uh, outcome was unexpected. So uh, I thought it was a very interesting meeting, uh, and uh, just congratulations on all your hard work and all the work that you now have to do ahead, uh, <laughs> because uh, studying those areas, uh, I'm sure it's going to it's going to be quite a quite a project for you. Um, but uh, thank you for the hard work and congratulations. And the only thing I have to add would be um, uh, Christian's Mattress Express Broadway across from the, uh, if your dog, if your dog could say, say Limos, across Limos. from Limos. Um, you know, it's a beautiful building, beautiful sign, and they keep mucking it up with their banners. And I think they kind of have a permanent banner on there now. Um, can we just kind of ask them to knock it off with the banners? Um, we can definitely let code enforcement know that that's what you're thinking. Just to let you know, 
happy to field questions anytime, but code enforcement is no longer in the city attorney's office. It is now located in community development. So um, I'm sure they can make sure that gets parlayed to them. So it's uh, not even in this room? No, no, no. Um, code but are we enforcement, talking Dana? Code enforcement used to be physically the officers in yes. the city attorney's office over here. And about a year ago, something like that, um, they, they were moved and they are no longer under the supervision or the, the, not no longer division in city attorney's office, but instead are a division of community development, which probably works well because they are right there with the building department and with planning as far as following up on, you know, permit conditions yeah. and things like that. Yeah, so Chair Siever, we can refer uh, that to our code enforcement. It, it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful building. Yeah. It's a beautiful sign and you, the, the banner does not need to be up there. And it just, we, we have an ordinance, no banners. Let's, it's time. So thank you very much. That's it for me, uh, commissioners. Commissioner Dickerson. I have a couple things. Uh, the first is, um, I was kind of reminded with the home motors, um, uh, semi-temporary um, parking. Um, Toyota, Toyota had a semi-temporary parking. Remember the, 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 that gravel parking in the back that was supposed to not be there forever, but is? So I'm kind of curious, um, what's the scoop with that? Uh, we can follow up on that. Okay. We will, I will do that. All right, I appreciate that. I don't that. have the answers to that, but I will follow up on that. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing I have is uh, this is the last um, um, meeting, public hearing of the um, of the year. And um, Com Commissioner Seifert kind of alluded to it, but I just want to say specifically, you guys do a phenomenal job. And I and I know the other commissioners appreciate tremendously the work and the effort that you put into it and anybody that's looking out there in the universe I mean, there's probably somebody's mom and two other people um, they, they should know that you guys you guys all do a fabulous job and your mom and probably watches every single time you can all say hi mom that's nice um, anyway I, I just want to say thank you so much for all the effort the time the professionalism that you could put into your jobs and your work over the last year. And um, I, for one, appreciate it tremendously. Thank you. Well so, said and agreed. Yeah. Thank there you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And happy holidays, happy holidays to you. Guys. And happy holidays to yeah. you. Merry Christmas. I believe we're adjourned. Thank you very much. I, I gotta get my hammer out. Hang on, I'm like it official. Uh -huh.